Welcome to worship. God loves you. As Christ Jesus has shared his peace with each of us, let us now share that peace with each other. Peace be with you. St. Andrews, this morning I invite you to join me. Um, and as Jesus lifted his hands to the heavens so many times, uh, let us lift our hands together as well. Uh, so please uh, stand up or stay seated, sing along, hum along, tap your foot. Uh, I just invite you to participate in worship in some way. faithfulness great is your faithfulness you never change and you never fail oh God true are your promises true are your promises you never change
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we all come to you today with many burdens and concerns in our own hearts. We come today to give those to you. But our first thing we need to do is focus on you and your love. And we thank and praise you for the rain that came this week that nurses this earth that you created. And we thank you for the warmth of the sunshine that warms our outer bodies to remind us of the warmth we receive when we remember you first in our lives. It's just such a wonderful feeling. And we thank you, God, for the friends and family that you place around us. They help guide our steps and direct us each and every day. So when we come today, Lord, help us to focus on you first. Help us to feel your love each and every morning when we wake up and know that you're around us and you're guiding our steps and you're putting persons in place to help lead us in the right directions. I ask that my eyes be opened and remain opened to follow the people that lead me to you each and every moment. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are having a super terrific day. So while the kids are coming on down to join me, get a little closer to hear what's happening today, I wanted to ask you a few questions. So has mom or dad ever tried to explain something to you because you were a little nervous or scared or worried about trying something new or going somewhere new for the first time? Yeah, I think we all have that happen. And sometimes it makes us feel a little bit better and sometimes we're still a little unsure of what's going on. Well, today we're talking about the ascension of Jesus. And I think it's really cool that in this story, Jesus stopped and he took time to talk to the disciples and say, hey, do you guys really understand what I've been teaching you now? Do you remember all those things I've been telling you about? And he talked to them and reminded them and reassured them. They were still a little nervous, but they were like, yeah, we, we kind of get it. Well, then that's when Jesus went back to heaven. So let's say this is, could be Jesus for us, you know, and you want to see Jesus float like the disciples did because it tells us he floated up. Now it might get a little bit loud, but just listen up and watch. I love how it looks like he's just floating up in the air. I wonder if I could catch him. I don't know. Woo! That was pretty cool. So I hope you guys like that. Let's have a prayer. Thank you, God, for all the wonderful things you give to us each day. Thank you for Jesus who helped us to learn and better understand all of his teachings. Amen. See you later, guys. Have a great week. The scripture lesson is found today in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 39, and then verses 50 through 53, according to the New Living Translation. We read the Word of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there a mountain. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened? He asked. 
Why are you hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it is really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. Then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshiped him and then returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple, praising God. La lección de la escritura se encuentra en el Evangelio de Lucas capítulo 24, versículos 36 al 39, y luego el versículo 30 al 53, acorde con la nueva traducción viviente. La palabra de Dios leemos en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Entonces, justo mientras contaban la historia, de pronto Jesús apareció de pie en medio de ellos y les dijo, paz sea con ustedes. Pero todos quedaron asustados y temerosos. Pensaban que era un fantasma. Y todos quedaron asustados y pensaban, ¿y por qué están asustados? Les preguntó, ¿por qué tienen el corazón lleno de dudas? Miren mis manos, miren mis pies, pueden ver de que de veras soy yo. Tóquenme y asegúrense de que no soy un fantasma, pues los fantasmas no tienen cuerpo como lo ven en mí. Entonces Jesús los llevó a Betania, levantó sus manos al cielo y los bendijo. Mientras los bendecía, los dejó y fue levantado al cielo. Entonces ellos lo adoraron y regresaron a Jerusalén llenos de gran alegría y pasaban todo su tiempo en el templo adorando a Dios. This is the word God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Esta es la palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias, Señor. Friends, would you pray with and for me? Gracious, holy, and loving God, may the words in my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all those gathered said, Amen. Friends, earlier this week, my colleague and friend, Suzanne Cobb, came to visit. And I would ask that you continue to hold her, James, and Laura, and their brand new baby girl in your prayers as you go forward this week. But she came to visit, and I was reminded of a workshop that we attended at Hinton Rural Life Center some years ago. It was led by Eddie Hammett, who well, the title for the workshop was the same as the book, the work that he had written, reaching people under 40 while keeping people over 60. At this workshop, Eddie shared some startling statistics, which sad to say, even continue to this day. One, at the present rate of change, most Americans will be non-Christians by the age of, by the year 2035. 8 million adults who were active churchgoers as teenagers will no longer be active in a church by the time they reach 30. Only 30% 30 of those in their 20s have read the Bible in the past week, compared to 37% of those in their 30s, 44% of those in their 40s, 47% in their 50s, and 55% of those aged 60 and above. Only three out of 10 adults in their 20s donated to a church in the past year, whereas 61% of older adults have donated to church. Did you know, friends, that 55% of men, 55% uh, of the unchurched are men? And in 20 years, only 40% of existing churches will remain. 
Now friends, if it seems that far away, just remember where you were 20 years ago and how quickly that time passed. And the statistics, I'm sad to say, continued on in relentless and brutal fashion. But there was one bright spot in the midst of the conference. Actually, there were several. But one was found in the beautiful chapel at Hinton Rural Life Center. It was simply this. There was a Bible. It was an American Bible Society Reward Bible. You know those Bibles that, that we give to our third graders when they're ready or our sixth graders as they get ready to embrace their uh, confirmation or, or possibly for our graduates that are just right around the corner? It was the American Bible Society Reward Bible. It was the Revised Standard Version. My uh, seminary professor, Dr. Smith, would love that. And the inscription said, presented to Nancy Moore, by Carborough Baptist Church, September 29th, 1974. Now, I think you recognize that's not all that earth shattering, unless you read or got to read what was written underneath it. Underneath that inscription was a quote, and it said, quote, God used this specific Bible to speak to me. I can now accept his love. Philippians 4, 10 through 13. Michelle Kovich, Atlanta, Georgia, April 2010. Just in case you've forgotten those words from Philippians are this. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know whatever it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed, of going hungry, of having plenty, of being in need. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. Now, friends, I don't know how that Bible made its way from Nancy Moore to Michelle Kovich, but I do know that a journey that started on a Sunday in September 1974 made a difference 36 years later in the life of a woman in Atlanta, Georgia. And that got me to thinking, what is our witness? What is our legacy? 36 years from now, what difference? What difference will the living word make in us and more importantly through us? The scripture lesson that you heard earlier this morning says you are witnesses. You are witnesses of these things. Well, Eddie Hammett in, in his work that I referenced earlier, reaching people under 40 while keeping people over 60, well, he shared two stories about witness from his life of faith. The first was the example of his grandfather. He writes, my granddaddy was in the camp of equating practice and tradition with the word of God struggle. My granddaddy was a deacon of his little mill village church and he would talk to us on the Sunday afternoon when we were together. He would snap his suspenders after eating that big old pot belly of his bumped up against the table and he would say, well, I wonder I wonder what I'm going to get to vote no on tonight at the deacon's meeting. That was how he saw his role as a deacon, because he didn't want anything to change. He liked church the way it was. It worked for him. That's what he liked. So Sunday after Sunday, when the deacon board was meeting, I wonder what I'm going to get to vote no on tonight. Then, Eddie Hammond also shares the story of his grandmother. And if you don't mind, I, I want to read that to you. He begins by saying that he was in his teens, I think late teens, early 20s, and he was hired by his church who loved him and watched him grow up, and they said, you are our Christian educator. And they charged him. They charged him with growing the church. And he and the pastor sat and they looked around the neighborhood because that's a great way to find out what it is that your neighborhood needs. You actually go out into it. And they did, and they found that there were a lot of families with a lot of babies. And they said, we need room for the babies. Well, they looked around the church and tried to figure out where they were gonna put the babies. 
and they came upon the room used by his grandmother's Sunday school class. Five ladies, big room, their long time. And Eddie went in and asked them to move. Well, friends, Eddie recounts for a while <laughs> that he was kind of persona non gratis in the church and around town. He could tell when he walked into a restaurant or a store that there were people that would point at him and whisper, and he knew what it was that they were saying. And after about eight months, he writes, eight months, his grandmother called him one afternoon and said, I want you to come over here. It was not, he writes, an appointed hour that we had agreed upon previously, but I said okay and went immediately to her house. And when I got there, she sat me down in that same little space we used to sit when I was four and five years old on the front stoop of the porch and she put her arm around me and she said, you've told me about some mistakes you've made as a young and inexperienced minister of education. But I've been praying and studying and I've been talking to some of my class members. God has convicted me of my position. In this matter, I've come to understand that my personal comfort is not as important as this church's mission. She shifted and said, I'm gonna walk into that class on Sunday morning, her Sunday school class that, well, he references looked a bit like a mausoleum and that's a conversation for another day. But she said, I am going to tell those ladies, not us, that we need to move down the hall and I want you to be with me. Eddie said he looked at her and said, Grandmama, I love you, but there's no way I'm going back in that room. And she said, well, at least be by the door. So Eddie says he stood out of the other woman's, out of the other women's line of sight. And he listened to his grandmother. And he says that he got his first real lesson of what a power broker looks like in church. My grandmother, his grandmother was one, he writes. I didn't know it until then. And she walked in and said to those other four women this, ladies, I have come to understand that our personal comfort is not as important as this church's mission and its future. I want us to move today to the class down the hall. And I want to take a little money out of our kitty, which was bigger, he notes, than the church budget. And I want us to fix up our new room. But I also want us to fix up this room that we are leaving for the new babies that are coming in. I want it to be nice, she said. I want us to start and adopt a grandchild ministry in this church for all those new families that are moving here that don't have grandmas and grandpas right by. I want us to learn to love these babies. We need them as much as they need us. And I want us to be a part of the future of this church and instead of the stumbling block to keep it where it is. He writes, then she picked up her chair and she walked down the hall. And you know what? Every one of those women followed her. They didn't say a word. They didn't ask a question. They just followed the leader. He goes on to say that one day before she died, he visited her in the nursing home. He was trying to find one of those open windows to his grandmother who now had Alzheimer's. And he was retelling the story and together the two of them caught a little glimpse of reality. She got up out of her little chair, walked to him with her wobbly cane and her frail body reached him and she hugged him and she whispered in his ear, we got those old women to go on mission, didn't we? Yes, Grandmama, we did. We got them to go on mission. So friends, the question I'm left with so who do we want to be? If Jesus said, give a witness, whose story, whose witness do we want to be, to embody and to live? Now, earlier in the service, I, I shared with you a lot of statistics that just seem to be going downhill, but there's two more that I wanna share with you. One, more than eight out of 10 adults in their 20s, that's 80%, said that their religious faith is important to them. And nearly six out of 10 claim to have made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ in their life. Second, three quarters, <clears throat> three quarters of young adults in their 20s, 75% said that they had prayed to God in the past week. Now, friends, 
I'm not planning on taking anyone's Sunday school classroom yet. But the Ascension story, the Ascension story of this Ascension Sunday reminds us of our call to be witnesses. There is a quote from a Hallmark movie, some of you might have seen it. It's called Love's Long Journey. And one of the characters, Scotty, says this, if believing the way they does makes them the way they is, it bears checking into sometime. Let me say that one more time. If believing the way they does, makes them the way they is. It bears checking into sometimes. So friends, will we believe the way in which Jesus has invited us to bear witness, to share his kingdom, to invite others to be a part, and to move heaven and earth as Jesus did for us so that we might welcome all. I trust that's a question that we'll have to answer in the coming days and weeks. And I also trust that we will be faithful. Amen and amen. Now, friends, in, in just a moment, you're going to hear some beautiful music in reflection that Sarah and others offer each and every week. And I'm going to invite you in that time as you listen to it to ponder that question. Whose witness, what witness will we offer so that others might come to know? Thank you. 
Dear friends, queridos amigos, let's pray. Oremos. God of loving goodness, thank you for your presence in this moment of worship. Dios de amor y bondad, gracias por tu presencia en este momento de adoración. How good is to feel your presence in the midst of this beautiful congregation of St. Andrew's family. Qué bueno es sentir tu presencia en medio de esta preciosa comunidad de St. Andrew's. As we come together, we sing, read your word, pray, and prepare for a new week. Al reunirnos, cantamos, leemos la palabra, oramos, nos preparamos para una nueva semana. Thank you for the message we received through Pastor Sherry and for the promise of hope that we found in the, in the Word that you provide for us today. Gracias por el mensaje que recibimos a través de la Pastora Sherry y por la promesa de la esperanza que encontramos en tu palabra. This morning's message challenges us to be your best servants here in our community. El mensaje de esta semana nos desafía a ser mejores servidores tuyos aquí en nuestra comunidad. We thank you for confirming us in our doubts and for accepting us despite our imperfections. Te agradecemos por consolarnos en nuestras dudas y por aceptarnos a pesar de nuestras imperfecciones. We thank you for your promises and for giving us the assurance that we can trust you. Te agradecemos por tus promesas y por darnos la seguridad de que en ti podemos confiar. Impart wisdom, mercy, and discernment as we work to achieve your kingdom. Imparte sabiduría, misericordia, y discernimiento mientras trabajamos para lograr tu reino. Remind us that all we have, our time, our resources, and our talents are yours, Lord. Recuérdanos que todo lo que tenemos, nuestro tiempo, nuestros recursos y nuestros talentos son tuyos, oh Señor. You make all things new. Renew our minds. Tú haces todas las cosas nuevas. Renueva nuestras mentes. You offer abundant and overflowing life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Tú ofreces vida abundante y desbordante. Llénanos de tu Santo Espíritu. Soften our hearts so that we are creators of justice, joy, and transformation. Ablanda nuestro corazón para que seamos creadores de justicia, alegría, y de transformación. We honor your presence among us and remember your disciples learning to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, again, thank you for coming to worship here at St. Andrews United Methodist Church. We are grateful that you have chosen to be with us this morning. As we prepare to part from one another, as always, we will offer invitations and updates. First, next Sunday, May 23rd, is special in the life of the church. It is our next hybrid Sunday, both in person and online. And you can check out the chatter for information about the meal to be offered that day, um, sponsored by our cross-cultural ministries and learning help centers of Charlotte. And so worship will be at 10 o'clock and we are very excited for that opportunity. We also invite you to take a moment to check out this week's chatter for information on the upcoming trustee work day on May 22nd, summer camp registration, training for our new defibrillator, preschool summer adventures, the Clancy Dallas Fund for Camp Tacoa, 
And again, this and more will be in the chatter. And you can always check it out on Facebook and the church's website. We also want to remind you that our stewardship campaign, Earn, Save, Give, is ongoing. It continues. Friends and family of St. Andrews are encouraged to complete and return their commitment card as a practice of spiritual discipline that supports the wide-reaching ministry of our church. So before we go, if you will stay tuned for just a moment, a word of stewardship from our Tuesday night Bible study. And friends, we'll see you here next week. I, I've always been a believer, but I came to be uh, spirit-filled later in life. I was in my 40s, and um, when that happened, it it was the the more the closer and the closer that I got to Jesus, the um, more and more I wanted to give to him and to, and I know this sounds silly, but to please him, to, to give to him. And I, I can remember Bud Streetman used to talk about, you know, falling in love with Jesus, got to fall in love with Jesus. And it really was, and still is the more and more that I fall in love with Jesus, the more that I want to give to him. When I came to St. Andrews over 20 years ago, I had a personal relationship with God, but I wasted money on things that would not satisfy. And when Bud died, I asked Jesus to be my husband, and Jesus blessed me abundantly with healing and a new heart, a new mind, and I wanted to give to God's people for furthering his kingdom. Martha, how can we give all that we can? I think we learn to give simply by budgeting. The things that we want, we save for, and we look ahead to see when we can get it. I think the church is the same way. We have to prioritize, and that has to be at the top of the list. And that's how we use our discretionary money to give to the church. Why do you give to the church? I give to the church because everything I have has come from God. And I'm giving back to God a portion of what he's given, perhaps not enough, but it's what I need to do because that's what, what God has given me everything. I give to St. Andrews because St. Andrews is my church family. I believe in what St. Andrews does. St. Andrews is filled with people who go out of their way to serve other people. And I wanna be part of that. I wanna help make that happen. And so that, those are the reasons that I, that I give to the church because of God's graciousness to me and God's generosity. And because I believe in what St. Andrews does. And I would add to that, in addition to that, when I consider what Jesus has done for us, the sacrifice he made for us, yeah. I think it goes without saying, uh, that's why we give. We give out of a grateful heart. And when we give out of a grateful heart, it makes, it makes a big difference in our attitude, not only at the church, but our attitude in life and how we witness to others. Yes. Amen. 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 What is our witness? What is our legacy? Lord, where there is hatred, may we show love. Where there is pain, may we show comfort. Where there is grief, may we offer the gift of presence. Where there is anger, may we show patience. For those that feel lost, may we cast hope. 
Lord, may our witness be a reflection of you and may our legacy be a legacy of love. Amen.